Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Today, I am once again trusting you and your recommendations, and we're going to be listening to Disturbed perform The Sound of Silence. This song is originally by Simon and Garfunkel, whom I love, and I love this song as well. But I'm a little bit anxious about what Disturbed is going to sound like doing it. Uh, their lead singer, David, I think, he's not... I haven't heard him see anything that I would necessarily consider pretty. Uh, I always associate his voice as having more rasp in it and definitely uh, uh, more rapping and screaming. So this song I think of as such a beautiful and soft song, and I'm really curious what he's going to do with it and why you've been recommending it. Let's get to it. This was not what I was expecting at all. I I would have thought that they'd have a more um, aggressive approach for sure. And instead we're hearing this amazing stripped down version with just David and the piano. And it's really beautiful. Also, you can tell that they haven't really fiddled with his vocal and post very much. I know that because I've edited a lot of vocals for people uh, and I can hear in the way um, he has a lot of mouth noises in the sound. It doesn't sound like they've edited that out very much. Um, so there's like lots of like sounds of spit essentially around his mouth that you can hear. Uh, also, I can tell um, in some of the way he's enunciating things. He isn't enunciating them very much. He's leaving a very, very natural uh, speech it is more tender uh, and a lot more um, intimate in the approach rather than moving his mouth a ton and he's able to do that because the microphone is really close to his mouth that also is catching a lot of those spit sounds um, but it allows him to sing with this softness too maybe not just allows him but it's a great way to capture that softness in his voice which is much more suitable to the message of this song. And speaking of the message, the sound of silence, I loved that at the beginning of this video, we saw all of these musical instruments um, just it with no sound behind them whatsoever, looking like they'd been trashed or um, destroyed, abandoned somehow. And you can hear in the emotion in his voice that there is a sense of so much loss already. Um, so this is this is just unexpected and very uh it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It actually gives even more depth to the Simon and Garfunkel version, which is saying a lot for me. I'm gonna catch the transition to the next part and let's keep going. Oh Simon In restless dreams I walked alone. Oh, there's your video. Narrow streets of cobblestone. color to the cold and down when my eyes were stained by the flash of a neon light that split the night and touched the sound of silence and in the naked light I saw 
uh, we're, we'll catch some more of this in just a bit, but I just wanted to say the beginning with him down in the octave, it sounded so much more haunted and, and dark. I love this dark feeling that they're bringing to the song. The Simon Garfunkel version to me had, uh, had a certain, uh, lightness to it. And this one feels, uh, it feels weighted down. And I feel like the words of the Simon Garfunkel version are a little juxtaposed with the lightness of the sound and the music. This actually feels more to me like what the message actually is. So it's a fascinating cover and it feels very accurate. Uh, let's catch that transition. In the naked light I saw 10,000 people maybe Wow. So, so far I've heard just a really clean tone from him, which is really impressive to me. It's got a lot of control, had a lot of, um, a lot of intimate sound at the beginning. And then here, I forgot, uh, his voice has something in it that I do remember, um, noticing when I was younger, it has a lot of, uh, I think it's it's probably the first or the second. I think it's the first overtone. So the overtone that's like an octave right above. I hear a lot of ring on that, which is what gives it like more of sort of like a lasery sound that's happening. Not laser. It's like more of a beam. So it's not like direct, like pow right there, but it's got a wider beam that hits. It feels, um, it just sounds already reverberant in some ways to itself. I really, really enjoy that sound in his voice. And I hope that we'll hear a lot more of it. Uh, uh, on top of that, it's really great to hear. He doesn't sound like he's actually straining at all. And he's done this in two different octaves now. So he jumped up the second half and it sounded like it was more powerful, but not stressful, which was really cool to hear. Let's catch, the, let's catch this transition and keep going. I'm So that sound on top, if I'm totally honest, that's not the sound that I usually go for. Um, it's got a lot of extra growl in it, but having heard him do all of this beautiful clean singing before, I like it added here. Um, when I've heard him before just singing in that sound, I never thought that he'd have the ability to do this uh, gorgeous and sensitive performance before. But now hearing that added as a cherry on top, it's much more enticing because it sounds like he had this darkness growing inside of him, very fitting with the song. But then it sounds like it got released in a little bit of anger on top, which I, I found that really thrilling and just another uh, way to express emotion with the voice. I'm going to go back and hear it again.
before it goes to an ad there. We'll go back and catch it again. I I really wanted to feel what that entire climax going into the end would be like. Um, so that's why I didn't pause and talk about some of the, the vocal technique along the way. Uh, I think it's really impressive how long he can sustain this uh, this scream. It And he's also pitching it very well. I also I was really impressed. I remember this before too, that he's able to go really high with that. Um, and so it doesn't sound like he's, uh, I don't know for sure that he's never done any damage to do his, to his chords there. I would have to hear him sing after he'd been using that gravel and see if it's still present. Um, instead we heard the clean version first and then gravel at the end. Uh, I would want to hear him, uh, continue to sing with like a little louder sound that still had a clean edge to it to know for sure if that's ever bothered his chords, but he's had a very, very long career. And when somebody's had a long career like that, you have to know that they're going to be supporting their vo their voice at least decently well. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to continue doing that. And he has been doing this for a very, very long time. Uh, I really like the use of a little more aggression in the sound for the song. I I didn't think I would, <laughs> but I do. And I think it's because the depth of loss uh, just struck me so much more in this version than in the Simon and Garfunkel version. Uh, also, I was really, really touched by the visuals here as well, this feeling of the loss of music, but also the loss of ability to just communicate. And uh, for me, the Simon and Garfunkel version is definitely about the ability to, uh, or rather the inability to communicate with people that uh, people just aren't able to talk to each other because they can't listen in the right way. And it seems like there's uh, there's so many layers to that as well, but it seems like they've really captured that message here in the way that people were, it seemed like they were talking to nothing sometimes. And then at the end, they had the boat crossing that chasm, which was, uh, I think, very indicative maybe of returned communication. Uh, but the, I love, love, love the amount of emotion that he's packing behind his voice. Uh, I want to go back and catch some of that ending part one more time. And then we'll talk a little bit more at the end about some other things in his te uh, technique that I find fascinating. Such a good use of delay, the way his his voice bounces. Um, it makes it sound like he's in an empty room. I love that production and I love the blackout screen as well. Um, now, before we totally wrap it up, I want to show you a couple other things in the video. He does some things that I don't normally recommend to vocalists, 
but he's so expressive and intentional about what he's doing. He's made it into his own style and it's, it feels like it's just him pouring out of his voice. You can, you couldn't think it's somebody else. It feels real and honest. And I like that. So one of the things that he does is he really leans into certain colored vowel sounds. So instead of singing silence and singing on the E eh, vowel on silence, um, that would be the normal uh, good approach to singing the vowel. He actually sings silence and he goes to the in much sooner. And he does the same thing for our colored vowels a lot. So uh, he'll sing er instead of er. Uh, and the first version is singing through um, kind of like an R-shaped tongue. And the second version is considered the correct version where you sing uh, a schwa, uh, and then get a tiny bit of R at the end, uh, and that's because it's generally considered uh, an ugly sound to sing an R vowel, but it doesn't, it, he doesn't sound like he's trying to sound pretty. He's just trying to sound raw and real, and it really works for him, really, really works for him. So don't change it if it works, right? So check out this ending and you'll hear a few of these sounds. The subway walls and tenement halls and whisper in the sound of silence. You're him sing on that in for a long time. go back one more time so you can hear that again. The thing he does do there that is considered really good, which is how I know that he's intentional, uh, sound is a diphthong. There's two vowels in it, sound. And he doesn't go to the end of that early the way he does in silence. He sings sound. So he sings the first vowel of the diphthong for a longer period of time before closing to the second vowel and then adding a little bit of in and a little bit of a D. That is considered exactly appropriate classical uh, approach to diction. And he does that exactly by the book, probably because it just sounds better for that long extended note. And he wanted to let that ring longer. So he's being very intentional about his diction. And that's really cool to see. Let's catch that one last time. Yeah, you guys were totally correct. This was absolutely a great recommendation. I loved the overall arrangement of it especially. It was great to hear this stripped down piano go to some added guitar. Eventually you had some strings come in and then like big drums. It became a very epic orchestration by the end. And I was really impressed with the ability of David to go from this smaller, tender sound to growing into something that felt like it was barely contained in anger and emotion and loss. It was a, such a huge array of emotions in between. That was awesome, awesome, awesome to see. So thank you so much for this recommendation. Please keep those recommendations coming. You can tell, I listen, I tally them up. I do the ones that you recommend the most. So do post below with what you'd like to see next. And please come and join me on Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Pacific time. I have live chats during the premiere so you can come and say hello. And also, if you wanna learn more about what's going on in here, I just released an online course that has lots of personal attention from me to help guide you to having amazing vocal foundation and technique. So check that out on the link below as well, and I hope to see you soon.